Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this part of the video, this is part two, um, I'm going to go over a practice problem and then go over some things that we need to keep in mind with respect to what can and cannot affect the uh, equilibrium constant. Okay, so let's get into this. So here we're given an equation, x, uh, x gaseous x uh, is in equilibrium with gaseous y and z. So you'll see here that one, one mole of x uh, will yield one mole of y and two moles of z in this balanced equation. And so the problem is asking us that this uh, is telling us that uh, this particular uh, this reaction at a particular temperature has uh, a K value equal to 1.4 times 10 to the third. So we're going to be able to use that to determine if our uh, reaction is at equilibrium. So what are they giving us? Um, they're giving us a mixture. So if they're saying if you mixed 1.2 moles of Y, and 0 0.070 moles of Z and 0 0.003 moles of X in a one liter container, uh, in which direction is the reaction going to initially proceed? So basically they want us to know, they want uh, to find out uh, whether or not it's going to shift left or shift right based on the concentrations that they gave us. Now, the first thing to notice is that they didn't give us molarity, they gave us moles, but they did tell us that it's in a one liter container. So if you remember that molarity, molarity is equal to moles over liters. So molarity is the number of moles per one liter. So we have the one liter container. So basically the number of moles is the, ends up being the molarity. So you can plug those numbers in. If this was not a one liter container, if it was like a two liter container, then what you would have to do first is take the moles, divide it by the number of liters. So you get the molarity of each substance first, and then you can plug that into your Q expression. So since we have moles in one liter, then the moles ends up being the same number of molarity. So what we need to do is write the Q expression for our equation. And so remember, the Q expression is the same as the KSP expression. So products over reactants. So we have Y, and all of these are in the gas phase, so they will all be in the expression. So if, if any of these was liquid or, or, or uh, solid, then we would leave it out of the expression. All right, so here we have Y as a product. So we're going to have the concentration of Y. And Y's coefficient is 1, so we just leave it there. So we have a 1, a one uh, exponent there. Uh, we don't write 1, so it's, it's there. Um, so next would be Z. So we're going to multiply that by the concentration of Z. And that's going to be raised to the second power because here we have a two coefficient. So this is going to be raised to the power of two. And that's it for our products. And so now we go to the reactant side. We only have one reactant. So it's going to be the concentration of X. And X has a one in front of it. So we have a, an exponent one, but we don't write ones. So here's our Q expression. So now all we need to do is plug in the values that they gave us for the concentrations. So we, we don't know if these concentrations are at equilibrium or not. If these are uh, these are equilibrium concentrations, maybe they are, we'll find out. So we got to take the concentrations, plug them into the Q expression, and then compare what we get for Q and uh, compare that to K. Okay, so Y, we have 1.2 moles of Y, that's uh, per, per liter, so that's 1.2 mol molar. So we're going to take 1.2 molar. We're not going to write molarities down because, again, it's unitless. So 1.2 uh, 
times, and then Z. Z is 0 0.070, so that's 0 0.070, and that's squared. And then we're going to do X on the bottom. So X, we have 0 0.003 moles per liter. So 0 0.003 on the bottom. And then we calculate it out and we get 1.96. Let me double check. Yeah. So here's our Q value. So now that we have Q, we're going to compare Q with K. So here's our K. And so if you look at K, uh, K is definitely bigger than your Q. Here we have 1.4 times 10 to the third. That's going to be 1,400, right? So that's 1,400 compared to 1.96. So Q is smaller than K. So what does this tell us? It tells us, that, remember that we have a ratio of products over reactants. If Q is smaller than K, that means we have a larger denominator and a smaller numerator uh, compared to that of K. So here we have too much reactant and not enough product. So it's going to shift to make reactant, right? Or I'm sorry, it's going to shift to make product. So again, we have too much, too much reactant, not enough product. So it's going to shift towards the product side to make more product and use up more reactant. And so that means it's going to shift towards the right. And so that would be the answer. So let's write that down. So we have, it's going to shift shift right to make more product. And so that's how you can use Q to answer questions with regard to whether or not your system is at equilibrium. Is your reaction equilibrium with these concentrations? So let's go on to the next thing. Sorry about that. So let's talk about what factors can and cannot affect your equilibrium constant. Okay, so here are a few things to remember about what can and can't change KEQ. So the following here are things that don't change KEQ. So changing concentrations, changing concentrations doesn't change the constant, the equilibrium constant. Um, so when you change concentration, remember uh, Le Chatelet's principle is going to say, well, it's going to undo that concentration change. Other concentrations of your reactants and products are going to change, either increase or decrease in order to get that ratio back to where it was. Remember. KQ is a ratio of the concentrations of products over reactants. So if you change the concentrations, the equilibrium is going to reestablish new concentrations so that you get your KEQ back, right? The same thing is said about changing in pressure. Pressures, uh, changing pressures is like changing concentration. If you um, change the volume, you're making the particles more crowded, more concentrated. And so therefore the reaction is going to shift in a way that's going to reduce the number of particles to get back to the original concentration, right? To, to make sure it's less crowded. And then again, remember, um, it's that ratio of products over reactants. So you increase in some way the pressures and therefore, uh, that equilibrium is going to uh, reestablish itself to, re to gain that new uh, concentrations that are going to get back the same ratio, uh, which is your KEQ. Uh, adding solids or liquids, we said, uh, doesn't change the equ uh, equilibrium constant because they don't really have concentrations or their concentrations are 
constant. So adding more solid or liquid to your reaction vessel is not going to change the KEQ. The ratio of the concentrations of products over reactants will stay the same. Uh, and again, uh, adding a catalyst doesn't change the KEQ. It just changes how, uh, the equal, um, the rate constant of a reaction, and it changes how how quickly you get to equilibrium. It doesn't change the equilibrium constant itself or the point of equilibrium. It just uh, changes how fast you get there. Now, uh, these things do change KEQ temperature. Temperature changes the KEQ because remember, when you're increasing or decreasing temperature, you're not changing concentrations, right? What do I mean that? That's a little, a little confusing, right? So remember, KEQ is a relationship between the, re, uh, the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants, right? So let's say I have a system that has equilibrium. Now, uh, if I don't change the concentrations, then these are going to stay the same, right? Um, and if I do change concentrations, then they're going to fluctuate so that they reach the same ratio. Now, with changing temperature, I'm not doing anything to the concentrations. I'm just increasing or decreasing temperature. So in that case, if I have, you know, an endothermic or exothermic reaction, right, depending on which reaction I have, um, the concentrations of the substances will change automatically to account for the energy change. And energy change is not, is not a change in concentration. So by adding more energy or removing more energy, I'm going to cause the reaction to shift on its own until it gets rid of the energy that I'm adding or it, it produces the energy that I'm taking away. It tries to get back to its equilibrium. So if I raise the temperature, so I'm raising the temperature, let's say I raise the temperature five degrees. Now I, it's got that heat, that extra heat it has to deal with, and it's going to shift in such a way in order to recalibrate uh, uh, and get back to an equilibrium that matches the temperature. And that new equilibrium means it has a new ratio. And that new ratio is a new KEQ. And so KEQ is temperature dependent. So that's why when you're mentioning a certain uh, equilibrium constant, it's usually tied to a particular temperature. And so I hope that was clear. And so, and then my next uh, segment here, I'm going to present you a table where I kind of uh, present you with those, these sorts of things and what they change and what they can't change. So just in, just uh, wait there just a moment. Okay. So finally, uh, here we are at the end. Uh, so here I have a table in which uh, we're going to look at the factors and see what it changes and what it doesn't change. What does it affect and what it doesn't affect. So let's look at these factors. So here we have the change. Now the triangle here, just to make sure everyone knows that this triangle means change of. And so these square brackets means concentration. So for the change in concentration of something, what's that going to affect? It's going to affect the rate of the reaction. So that's the law of mass action. So changing the concentration will change the rate of the reaction. Uh, it won't change the rate constant K. So this is the small letter K. If you go back to my videos, if you remember from my videos dealing with rate laws, that's the little K for the rate law constant. And it doesn't change that. So changing the concentration does not change the rate constant K. It will change the equilibrium point. We saw that it will shift left or right, depending on the change in the concentration of a product or reactant. And it will not change the equilibrium constant. So we need to make sure that we understand the difference between the equilibrium point and the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium point is a point at which the concentrations are given or the concentrations are going to reach an equilibrium. 
um, to, uh, to create that ratio, which is the equilibrium constant. So the equilibrium constant is constant, but the equilibrium point is not constant. It'll just depend on what your equilibrium concentrations are, right? Um, so what about uh, change in pressure? Same thing. Uh, they will change the, they will affect the rate of the reaction and they will affect the equilibrium point, but they, uh, changing the pressure will not uh, affect the rate constant or the equilibrium constant. What about surface area? If you change the surface area of something, right? So if you crush a salt into a powder, right? Um, that will, again, change the rate of the reaction, right? So changing the surface area will affect the rate of the reaction, but it won't affect any of these things here. It's not going to affect the rate constant. It's not going to affect the equilibrium point, and it's not going to affect the equilibrium constant. What about changing the amount of solid and liquid? Remember, solids and liquids, they don't affect the equilibrium constant equation. They're not part of that equation or expression. Um, so it's not going to affect anything. So increasing the amount of solid or liquid is not going to not influence any of these things. Same goes for inert gas. So putting an inert gas in there, not going to affect anything as well. What about a catalyst? So the catalyst will affect the rate of the reaction. It will allow the reaction to reach equilibrium quicker. Um, and it will affect the rate constant as well. So it will affect these two. Because remember, uh, the rate constant, part of the, what the rate constant takes into consideration is activation energy. And your catalyst does change the activation energy um, of the reaction. So it will influence these two things, but it will not influence the equilibrium constant or the equilibrium point. It just allows you to reach that equilibrium point more quickly. And then finally, temperature will affect all of these things. So the rate constant uh, is temperature dependent and the equilibrium constant is also temperature dependent and it will affect the rate of the reaction so heating up will uh, change in the temperature will uh, affect whether or not it goes more quickly or more slowly, depending on whether you're increasing or decreasing temperature. And it will uh, affect the equilibrium point as well as the equilibrium constant. So this is a nice table to uh, allow you to kind of see together like what, what's going to affect what, what doesn't have an effect on certain things. And so that's it for this video. If you enjoy this video, if this was uh, helpful to you in any way, then please, by all means, share this video with your friends, like this video, hit that like button right over there. Also subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. And when you do, make sure you also hit the all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.